Unveiled Identities of Presidential Brigade Guards Gunned Down by Terrorists. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel to get notified when we we'll post hot juicy news updates. Please click on the notification bell. The identities of some of the officers who lost their lives in an ambush by terrorists in Abuja have been unveiled. Daily Trust have reported how a captain and two soldiers were killed by terrorists in the Bwari area of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, on Sunday night. The deceased officers who were attached to the Presidential Guards Brigade were reportedly ambushed after they visited the Nigerian Law School in Bwari following the distress call from the authorities of the school. The school management was said to have alerted that terrorists had dropped a letter indicating an Im imminent attack. Spokesman of the Guards Brigade, Captain Godfrey Anebi Abakma, confirmed the attack to daily trust with said troops were already combing the area in order to ensure that ferries were not hibernating there. Daily Trust learned that Lieutenant Ibrahim, Suleiman and Captain Samuel Atta, who were indigents of Kogi State, were killed in the ambush. Suleiman was the son of, Colon of Colonel Suleiman Amodu Babamwa, retired. He hailed from Opo in Olamaburu local government area. Late Atta was from Ibaji local government area of the state. Meanwhile, messages of condolences have been pouring into the family of the slain soldiers. Sympathizers have been trooping to the family house of Colonel Babama retired at Opo in Olamaburo local government area over the loss of a son. The bereaved father reportedly made his marks to the Nigerian army before he retired. And this is how the Nigerian army chose to pay him. Hmm? He made the marks in the Nigerian army before he retired. And then, this is anyway, hmm. yeah. at this point, Permit me to say our hero's past will be wailing and rolling in their griefs, asking what exactly is wrong with the set of people who are in charge this period. To be sincere with you. Continue to deploy our brothers to the front line while at the same time give your terrorist brothers information about their movement. Your own death is fast approaching, if you must know. Sincerely, this is so sad. My condolences, my sincere heartfelt condolences to the families of those who lost their lives. We don't even know at this point if they're only free. They said, I mean, uh, if there were only eight. Because some news, uh, 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 some media outlets said it was eight, some eight, three, some. We don't know. You know, these things are always conflicting. You know, in Nigeria, they don't give out. I don't know why they always keep playing down on the lives lost. But nevertheless, we hope that the family finds, you know, uh, you know, the fines, God grants them the fortitude to bear this loss. And again, it is going to be painful that the father served an army and the son went to serve in the same capacity. And, you know, this is how it ended. Sincerely, we send our condolences. Okay. My brother, the situation is terrible, and I'm sorry for them when it will start. There are moves and third colonies in the army and other security organization. I have been saying this since last year that the army by the Nigerian security forces has been compromised. Terrorists, people who used to kill, people who used to kill order to slaughter, to slaughter Nigerian soldiers. Nigerian soldiers caught them, handed them to the government. What did the government do? They infiltrated them into the Nigerian army. Rubbishing and spitting on the lives of those that these same people had killed before. <laughs> okay. Why you not they help them chop bullets? Make una they shift so that the bullets go go where you want. See now, when I don't cry, him steady. <laughs> Rest in peace. This person, eh? as much as this is not funny, I don't know why it is cracking me up. It is hard time these soldiers revolt against this government who never care for anyone's life. They are human beings too, and they should not be quiet, quiet and allow their life to be wasted by bandits supported by the government actions. Well, Unfortunately, the Nigerian army will obey the last order coming from your superior. Anywhere they say make you then go. You know when you have a dog and you train that dog. Anytime we tell that dog to do nothing, go do. Now so the soldiers be. Obey the law. Even if that law is, you know, it is life threatening. I wait they sign up for. But make I can't even bust to our bubbles. Now this kind of thing they make um cool happen. Now this kind of thing they cause sound. When people don't to look, when people don't to keep quiet, this thing really happen, they happen. Now this kind of thing, they make 
the military men will rise. Okay. Revolution will happen if they look away from tribal dance and consider safety of Nigeria as an entity. But Buhari has an arrangement with Boko Haram, so it is not going to happen easily. Can you relate to what Abacha said concerning the last more than 24 hours having the involvement of the government? I've been saying this 1,001 times. Abacha said, and I quote, that any insurgency that in a particular land, in a particular country, that lasts for more than 24 is it, is it 24 to 48 hours that it's that the government of that day has a hand in it? I have been quoting it for in fact, if you, there, are, there are times where I, there is no news article that I come across and will not quote it. Why was I saying it that time? Because it was glaring. The government were leaving these people, they were giving them free hand. It was glaring that the government that then they give that then they even carry out this thing themselves. Okay, the present government has lost it all, and so has the all progressive Congress. I don't understand. My APC administration, this now. We should stop pretending as if we do not know what is happening. The all progressive Congress started the commercialization of banditry. Boko Haram and other social ills affecting us today possible. The all progressive Congress started it during Gulag Jonathan's government to discredit that government. The all progressive Congress created this monster facing us today. Now, most Nigerians pretend as if they do not know. Well, at this point in time, eh, this story, I've heard it, I've heard it a lot. I've heard it a lot. That the APC was the one that brought, I've heard it a lot. But that is not the bone of contention. The bone of contention is Nigerians. How we are going to be able to arrive in 2023 or at the election day. In one piece. Okay, there is really fire on the mountain and the presidency seems not to be aware. Clueless has to put out the fire. We are watching where all the shenanigans will end. And the thing, the fact will be say, Asha, I mean, as Asha, Asha goes sing for them. There is fire on the mountain and they don't still understand where she was coming from. Okay, they don't still understand where she was coming from. No condolence, they disgraced themselves and Nigerians... Shall survive when Tinubu takes over. <laughs> oh my goodness. This government is supposed to be one of the best governments in tackling security. That I mean, to start tackling insecurity. That is what we thought. We thought that this man's history of the military, you know, the military, if he comes in, is going to bring a lot of his experience to play, and we are going to be, you know, we are going to be having a free Nigeria. That is, in fact, that is the main reason why people, and let, let me tell the people that in, in 2015, before this man came around, that it is only Bronu State, and not just Bronu, it was just few areas in Bronu that they were actually having attack in. If you people can remember vividly, this man came, can't tell on and say, na inside her fire in a day. Meanwhile, the one in a day there can't be waiting. Huh. Okay, well, on this note, we have come to the end of the news. So thank you for tuning in to listen. Until I come your way next time, enjoy the rest of your day.